Hi guys, it's Michelle and today's video is going to be yet another pop culture conspiracy theory video for you guys. Y'all know I love pop culture really so much and there is a lot of shit going on right now. So that means that this is extra fun, honestly. Like I am so excited. I've been so excited to film this video. So let's just jump right in. All right, the first conspiracy theory that we're gonna be talking about has to do with yet again, Tom Cruise. It's more about Katie Holmes, actually. So we have talked about how Tom Cruise is a part of the Church of Scientology. I honestly like kind of get scared to talk about it because I don't know, like what if they freaking kidnap me? I mean, like, I hope not. But anyway, we've talked about Tom Cruise's involvement in the church multiple times and how it has affected some of his very public relationships slash marriages. And I saw this conspiracy theory about Katie Holmes that I found to be very interesting. It goes hand in hand with the whole theory that the church kind of controls what Tom does, but we'll get into it. Something that I personally never knew because I literally have, um, I almost had never seen a Marvel movie, but I'm pretty sure actually Batman is not Marvel. Isn't that DC? I don't know. Superhero things are like not my thing. So I never knew this theory. I had never heard of it. And I was researching different theories about Tom Cruise because I feel like there's a lot to dive in there. Honestly, could potentially do a whole separate video on it. And I came across this theory that I found to be very interesting. Katie Holmes actually starred in the Batman movies as Rachel Dawes. She was replaced by Maggie Gyllenhaal in 2008 for The Dark Knight Rises, which ultimately was obviously a smash hit. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of it. A lot of people wonder why Katie Holmes would have turned down such a big role or if she had gotten fired from the series it was unclear and a lot of people were upset by it, which I get because, you know, I feel like when they just like randomly change an actor, you're just like, what the fuck? Like fucking Halloween Town? The Sarah Paxton movie is my favorite plot. I really wish they didn't replace Marnie. Nonetheless, I think this theory is actually really interesting because it goes into the idea that perhaps Tom Cruise had something more to do with the reason that Katie turned down this role. Not just Tom Cruise himself, but also the Church of Scientology. We've talked about the conspiracy theory that a lot of Tom Cruise's relationships have been perfectly calculated by the church. And whether or not you believe that's true or whether or not that is true, I do think that this theory holds up a lot of evidence. It actually all goes back to Tom Cruise's relationship and marriage with Nicole Kidman. So when Tom started dating Nicole Kidman, he was newly a Scientologist, which again, that was new information to me. I always thought that he was like born a Scientologist. I didn't think this was just something you fell into. He did because he got into it after he was married to his last wife, Mimi Rogers. But at the time that Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise got married, he didn't really talk much publicly about being a part of the Church of Scientology. Nicole was never a part of Scientology and she tried to keep that separate from their relationship. So Tom and Nicole were married for 11 years from 1990 to 2001. Obviously, Nicole Kidman is a very successful actress. She was in the spotlight herself and she had a lot of control over her own career, which is something that people believe the Church of Scientology did not like. Mostly because the church seems to really enjoy its celebrity ambassadors and like they enjoy when celebrities talk about them. Tom, during his relationship with Nicole, was talking about Scientology way less often. Allegedly, he also kind of took a step back from the church itself, like even just like going to church and stuff, not just publicly talking about it. But obviously we don't really know if that's true or not but that's how this theory goes. For sure, he was talking about it way less often in the public eye, at least. However, towards the end of Tom and Nicole's marriage, Tom became way more vocal about the Church of Scientology and would talk about it in a very public manner and just his involvement really increased. I think this led a lot of people to believe that that was the reason for their divorce, especially after these photos of Nicole Kidman released the day that her divorce was finalized. I think a lot of people saw this as like a, oh my God, she looks like she just got out of one of the most terrible relationships of her life and she looks so happy and free. And so a lot of people tend to point the fingers towards Scientology. Again, we don't know if that's necessarily true or false, but it's definitely interesting. This kind of gave Scientology a bad rep, I would say. I think a lot of people weren't really sure exactly what happened between Nicole and Tom, but obviously having 
this church like looming over you that now he is so like vocal about and he started being very vocal about towards the end of their marriage and after their split people are assuming that the church had something to do with the reason why they broke up i also think it's fair to say that the church of scientology would probably not want the media to believe that you know something about their church was the reason for this celebrity couple breakup because it just kind of paints the church in a bad light. So it's believed that actually it was after that point that the church wanted to be more involved with who Tom Cruise decided to date and marry. 2005 rolls around, Katie Holmes stars in her first big blockbuster movie. That man was a huge hit Obviously, I feel like it was just like kind of a shoe in and it was her first big role. A lot of people thought that this was really going to be a breakout moment for Katie because obviously like this is like your first blockbuster movie and it's a series. So, you know, you're like kind of a shoe in for the next one. It seemed like Katie was going to have the perfect career, but she started dating Tom around this time and actually took a three year hiatus from acting. In 2008, Katie Holmes made a decision that was arguably one of the worst things that she could have done for her career, which was that she decided to not return for The Dark Knight Rises and reprise her role and thus was replaced with Maggie Gyllenhaal. Like I said, this confused a lot of people and she was actually doing another movie at the time and it was an, honestly a blockbuster flop. Like it didn't do well in the box office. It was the movie Mad Money. It was a comedy, very different from anything that Katie had done previously. And it was starring her, Queen Latifah and Diane Keaton. After a three year hiatus and not make time to reprise her role in Batman, which would obviously be a natural success, honestly didn't really make much sense. A lot of people assumed that maybe she had gotten fired, however, she she cleared the air on that and said that she chose to do the Mad Money movie over Batman like on purpose. So it's very confusing. It's made a lot of people question why she would do something like this. And it made a lot of people question whether or not it was her decision at all. And perhaps her husband, Tom Cruise, or the Church of Scientology had a little bit more to say about it. So the theory goes that the church really wanted to keep Katie Holmes' career under wraps. They knew if she had continued her career after such a smash hit like Batman, and she had continued her career throughout those three years where she started dating Tom, and then went back in in 2008, reprised her role, they knew that that would be a smash hit huge Hollywood actress, which Katie Holmes still is, but of course it would have taken her to a whole nother level. So it's actually conspirized that the Church of Scientology did not want this to happen. You might be asking yourself why, because at that point, Katie Holmes had actually joined the Church of Scientology as well and was studying it. So why wouldn't they want another Scientologist who has this massive following of people to like kind of be spreading the word in a positive way about the Church of Scientology. They thought back to Nicole Kidman and knew something obviously went wrong in the relationship between Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise and they were afraid that that was going to happen again. So in order to try to avoid this issue arising, had anything happened between Katie and Tom, they decided that they should encourage Tom to encourage Katie to take a hiatus and then to do lesser known movies and to step back from her role in Batman. Honestly, I feel like that's kind of the only thing that really makes sense to me because obviously easiest question in the world is which would you rather do a movie that you know is going to be successful or kind of one that could potentially flop. It makes no sense. And especially like the script for this movie like wasn't so outstanding and amazing, obviously, because the movie itself, a lot of people did not like. It's just a riskier career move overall. It doesn't really make sense. However, if her new husband is kind of convincing her and swaying her opinion, especially when that new husband is a well-respected actor, I could see how he would be able to convince her to choose the other movie. It kind of gives the church slash Tom a way to control Katie rather than have her be this huge successful actor on her own like Nicole Kidman was. I don't know. I kind of believe this theory. I think that it makes a lot of sense because obviously Katie and Tom ended up getting divorced in 2012 and she specifically wants to keep her and Tom's children away from Scientology. So I do think that there was definitely something darker going on that we have 
no idea about. I don't know. I think it makes a lot of sense, but I would love to hear you guys' theories. The next conspiracy theory we're going to be talking about has to do with Blackpink. I thought this theory was really fun and funny. I'm pretty sure it is just like a joke between the Blackpink stands, but I still thought that it was a fun theory and it has an interesting twist at the end. So it is a theory that Rosé from Blackpink is actually cursed. More so that she curses people, I guess. I don't know. She's a witch. Interesting. But basically, the theory goes that every time a huge celebrity that is in a relationship takes a photo and posts it on social media with Rosé, that celebrity and their significant other have a very public breakup just a few weeks to a few months later. And this has proven to be true. It first started with Gigi Hadid. Jose and Gigi Hadid posted this photo together. A few weeks later, Gigi announced that her and Zayn were breaking up. Next was Florence Pugh. Her and Rose were seen together. And then a few weeks later, Florence and her boyfriend, Zach, were also broken up. Same thing with Kendall Jenner. Kendall Jenner and Rose posed for a photo. And then a few days later, Kendall and Devin Booker's breakup was announced. Probably most famously, Taylor Swift and Rose were photographed together at the VMAs. And then a few months later, Taylor and Joe Alwyn's breakup was announced. And now, which I think is interesting because I feel like more keeps getting added to the theory as we go along. But Ariana Grande was photographed with Rose and now Ariana and her husband Dalton Gomez have broken up. I don't know. I think this is an interesting theory. And I guess the reason people believe that Rosé herself is doing the curse in the song Gone, Rosé sings, I'll put a curse on her and you. I don't know. I think it's an interesting theory. It's kind of just fun and funny. I think it's like more of an inside joke with the black pink stands, which either way, I like it. I think it's a fun theory. And it leads us into our next conspiracy theory, about Ariana Grande. So unless you've literally been living under a rock, I'm sure you've heard the rumors that Ariana Grande is currently dating her Wicked co-star, Ethan Slater. Both of them were just married like two minutes ago um, to other people. So there is a lot of drama surrounding it. I'm sure you've heard of it. There's kind of a lot of confusion regarding this, and I wanted to talk about a few different theories that I have slash have seen around TikTok. For the most part, I think mo most people believe that they are definitely dating. I think where it gets hazy is that some people say that Ariana and Dalton broke up in January, and some people say that Ethan and his wife Lily were separated two months before Ariana and Ethan's relationship began. However, that gets a little bit hazy on both ends. Ariana posted an anniversary picture of her and Dalton's wedding in May, um, and it is currently August. This happened at the end of July, so it's kind of cutting it close and also definitely not January, so I'm just like confused. Maybe they were trying to make it work. Who knows? At the same time, Ethan also posted a very kindly worded Mother's Day appreciation post for his wife, Lily. And that was also in May. The Wicked movie began production in December of 2022. Ariana's been living out in London for quite some time. There's definitely some questionable aspects about the whole thing, which is obviously why it is so popular. And Ethan's wife made an official statement, but then some of their friends like counteracted the statement. So let's just get into it. So Ethan's wife, Lily J said, quote, Ariana's just not a girl's girl and my family is just collateral damage. Obviously that's indicating that Ariana essentially stole Ethan from Lily. However, some of Lily's friends apparently have come out and said that Ariana and Ethan didn't do anything wrong and Lily is just rightfully upset about the ending of her marriage. At the end of the day, these friends claim that Ethan and Lily had been separated by the time Ariana and Ethan got together. Now, I don't think we'll ever know the full truth behind this unless they outwardly we're like, yeah, we started seeing each other while we were married to other people, which I don't think is something that they would do. Um, like, I don't think that's something they would say. Not that I don't think it's something that they would do. I, I don't know. But the conspiracy theory that I have heard going around is that all of this is a publicity stunt for the movie Wicked. Obviously, I don't think the ending of their respected relationships has anything to do with like a publicity stunt just because that seems a little extra. I do think that it's a possibility that, you know, all of this was kind of blown out of proportion for a specific reason. First of all, there's a lot of aspects about this that don't really add up. Like for example, the friends saying that Ariana and Ethan didn't start dating until after 
Lily and Ethan were separated and then the Instagram posts don't add up to the timeline of anything. And also just like the fact that Ethan looks so much like Frankie Grande is will never sit right with me like that. I, come on. Like, it's insane. And then other people claim that Lily was completely blindsided by this and found out with the media or just a few days before the news broke that Ariana and Ethan were together. I don't know. I do find to be interesting is the idea of a publicity stunt or even just the idea of it's all being true, but like the reason it's so publicized and the reason that we're like, were they together? Were they not? Like, did they cheat? Did they not? is because that's what they want us to think in order to promote the movie Wicked. It sounds kind of dramatic, obviously, because it's obviously bad press. Like, it's not good. Definitely not been a good look for either Ariana or Ethan. So you might ask yourself, like, why would they agree to that? That's what I asked myself, too, until I saw this video of Ryan McCartan, the star on Livin' Maddie, the Disney Channel show. So random. I just love him. Actually, he was also in Wicked. I saw him, well, on Broadway. I saw him on, in Wicked on Broadway. Um, he was Fiero. He was fantastic. Anyway, him and Dove Cameron had a very public relationship, and I always assumed it was real. Like, not even a second did I think that any of it had to do with publicity. And their relationship part was real, but PR really takes a step further. Like, just listen to what he had to say. I'm not saying any of this happened. But let's say someone was on a TV show a long time ago and ended up falling in love with and dating their romantic co-star who was the lead of the show. While these two people were exploring their love, one or some of the producers from the TV show that they were on when they met and started dating got involved in how or when it was announced that they were dating to boost ratings for the TV show. Some network executives saying it would be more beneficial for them to date their co-star from another project they were starring in for the network because that would boost ratings for that project and that's the one that the network is most interested in promoting at this time. The highly powerful and influential publicist got involved in almost every aspect of their relationship. Theoretically, if they had like a really public messy breakup, that elements of that breakup were handled by this publicity firm under threat of retaliation if certain statements weren't made at certain times. Major publications like magazines and online blogs would somehow get a tip this couple was thinking of taking their relationship to a new direction and maybe even talking about getting engaged. And therefore, let's also assume that that engagement was timed and catered to the desires of the publication for when they thought it would get the most clicks. Couple had no say in when or how the engagement happened. Let's assume that that engagement was therefore rushed because it fit well with the spring issue of the publication, not because it was actually the right time. After hearing that, I do feel like publicity stunt dating is low key kind of a thing. Let's talk about a few reasons why this could be. So obviously the Wicked movie is coming out. So they see Ariana, even if let's just say, Ariana and Ethan started dating after both of their marriages had ended. Like after they were separated from their partners, there was no cheating involved. Let's just say that's the case. It kind of benefits them to make it into more of this scandal of like, did they cheat? Did they not? What's the tea? Was it a homewrecking situation? Like what's going on? It kind of makes more sense to spin it in that manner, regardless if it's true or not because I'm not saying it's not true, it definitely could be. But if it's not, it still makes more sense for them to make it in that way because now people are talking about the Wicked movie and talking about this, which personally, I always thought the Wicked movie was like a huge deal. Probably because I'm a theater nerd, so I obviously knew about this movie in advance, but a lot of people that I've come across in real life had no idea that this movie was even a thing and that Ariana Grande was in it. A lot of regular people don't know that. So if you're a theater kid and you're like, obviously everyone knows about the wicked movie it doesn't even need promotion babe you just go ask your like weird friends who don't know anything about theater i promise they probably had no idea that this movie was going on until this scandal happened even if they did like have an affair essentially and cheat on their spouses it didn't necessarily like have to come out as publicly as it did and i do think that it says a lot that they're not like saying anything about it it's just all very interesting, for sure. And I do think it's making people wanna watch the Wicked movie because obviously they're starring in it together. Whether the relationship is real or not is not really like my question. Like, I do believe that they are dating. I am unsure, obviously, cause I'm not in the marriages. If 
you know, it, there was like overlap. I do think that the, you know, timeline of things suggests that possibly, but like, again, kind of not my circus, not my monkeys. I do think that like, for sure, the way that this information came out is very like press. It feels very PR vibes to me. Because even though it's bad press, they do say bad press is still good press, which has proven to be true. So let me know what you guys think. All right, the next conspiracy theory we're gonna be talking about is the Black Eye Club. There's a pretty dark theory that's been going around since about early 2021. It's raising the question of why we see so many celebrities out and about with a black eye. I honestly never thought about this until I was researching pop culture theories and came across this and I was like, wait, that is so weird because think about like, I feel like I'm 25 years old. I could count on one hand the amount of times that I've seen a person with a black eye in real life. Like, it is very minimal. I don't know if I, like, just, like, don't get out much, but I feel like I don't see people with, like, black eyes every single day. It is really strange that so many celebrities have gone out in public with just unexplained bruises on their eyes. And specifically, the left eye. Apparently, the left eye is a demonic... Illuminati eye. I don't know. You guys know I never believe that celebrities are in the Illuminati except for now I actually kind of do. People think that because the eyes are the windows to the soul that when celebrities are selling their soul to Satan or whatever you think the Illuminati is but a lot of people believe that it is them selling their soul it comes through their eye and that's what like leaves a bruise and it's a part of some Illuminati ritual. I would like to hear you guys' thoughts on this because I feel like anything with the Illuminati is always just confusing to me, but I do think that it makes sense because I feel like people low key would sell their souls to be famous and rich. Like, I don't know. Also maybe selling your soul is kind of like metaphor, so to speak, and you kind of just will do whatever the person does. So have a bruised eye and like go out in public with it. That's like some sort of initiation to the Illuminati. I don't know. I mean, I do think that it's a strange coincidence if like all of these celebrities just have black eyes and it's always the left eye. Like it's really weird if you think about it, but I would love to hear you guys' thoughts because honestly, I don't know. I don't have another explanation. <laughs> like the only explanation to me is that they're in the Illuminati and that's never a good thing. One of my friends like really believes in the Illuminati and believes that all celebrities are part of it and whatnot. And I used to freak out as a kid um, because it would scare me and I didn't want to believe that the celebrities I idolized were a part of like a Satan cult. So having these celebrities all be in the Illuminati as the only explanation is kind of weird. Let me know what you guys think though, because it kind of freaked me out. All right, the next conspiracy theory is about the Kardashians. I, duh. I just think the Kardashians are such an interesting concept overall. I really love talking about them in these pop culture videos because they are pop culture quite literally. So this theory I actually think is more true than anything. Like I wouldn't even call it a theory. I would say this is probably pretty accurate, but I don't know. Don't sue me. The theory is that the Kardashians own a church in order to avoid paying taxes. In June of 2008, Kris Jenner actually helped founded the California Community Church, which is a nonprofit charity organization that requires the members to pay $1,000 a month to be a part of, but also they have to give 10% of their yearly income to the church, which is such a weird thing. I mean, I'm not really a religious person and I never really have been, but I never understood giving 10% of your income to any church or like any religious, like why? Why? That's like really fucking weird in my opinion, but whatever. So obviously you might be confused if you've never heard of this church or knew that the Kardashians have owned a church for the past over 10 years. That's honestly fair because the Kardashians like obviously have their show Keep Me Up with the Kardashians and slash now it's just the Kardashians on Hulu, but they kind of pride themselves on sharing everything and being so vulnerable and so open. So it's very interesting that they would have an entire business that just no one knows about. And it's conspiracy that the whole thing is really just a setup so that they can avoid paying taxes. Obviously something that very rich people do quite often is donate to charity because charitable donations are a tax write-off. Churches count as a charitable organization. Not only that, but the church is owned by their mother who also gets 10% of their earnings. The church is getting 10%, which is then written off. But the money is actually just going to Kris Jenner. So like, 
she doesn't have to pay taxes on her income. Having charitable donations on your, you know, payroll is obviously just better for taxes overall for the rest of the Kardashians. I think that this makes a lot of sense and is probably true. It does not help the case to know that this church has been a part of several different tax scandals over the years. It gets a little dicey, but I think that it makes a lot of sense. And I feel like most people would probably agree that it might not be a conspiracy, but more so true. Let me know what you guys think though. All right, the last conspiracy theory that we're gonna be talking about freaks me out. It involves everyone's favorite rom-com man, uh, Mark Ruffalo. 23 years ago in the year 2000, Mark Ruffalo actually had a very strange dream. So he had a dream that there was a tumor on the left side of his head right behind his ear. In this dream, it was like him telling himself that he had to deal with this tumor immediately. Well, you kind of get where this is going, but at the time Mark Ruffalo was working on a movie, The Last Castle, and he went up to the doctor on set and said, I know I'm going to sound crazy. I think I have a brain tumor. So he ended up getting some scans done and he did in fact have a brain tumor right behind his left ear, exactly where he had dreamt it, which is so nuts. Like actually think about how crazy that is for a second and it really will freak you out. But for the most part, it actually got me thinking about different conspiracy theories that have to do with this specific like concept of do we know when something is wrong intuitively how much can we know this is for the trippy bitches like this is like for the people who like my weird concepts that i have and i think this is like one of those weird like borderline crazy conspiracy theories that makes a lot of sense though i think that it is a possibility that like psychically we are way more in tune than you think. I think that it's a really interesting concept that maybe like we know more about our bodies and when we're gonna die or like anything and like we can really be in touch with that. And I think psychics, like low key, maybe we're just all psychic, actual like psychics who, you know, do readings and stuff are the ones who have kind of cracked that code early on and knew that like, we have the power to know everything that's going on in our lives and others. Like we just know like intuition is such a real thing. I don't know. I'm trying to tap in and fucking learn about myself and uh, the people around me. I just think this is so interesting. And I feel like I'm more in tuned than most people. And that sounded so annoying, but it's true. Like I feel like low key, I'm like a bit of a psychic. I like sometimes I will predict things and they actually happen. So I'm just like wondering like how you get so in tune like to be a like legit psychic like the fucking Long Island medium. What's she doing? Do I need to go get those nails? Because I will. Anyway, that is it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about these conspiracy theories. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on them, but that is it. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram and subscribe for new videos every week and I'll see you guys later. Bye.